Devil Never Cry. Welcome to the next installment in a series of guides for Final Fantasy XVI. In today's video, we'll be continuing to cover advanced combat. I'll be providing insight into some of the more advanced things that you can do in the combat to help you prevail against your enemies. If you're interested in more guides and content for Final Fantasy XVI, then definitely subscribe as there's more on the way. If you're specifically looking for help with combat, then I suggest you check out some of my previous combat guides where I cover a range of topics. And so with all that said and done, let's finally dive right in. First and foremost, let's talk about one of the biggest stagger building skills that you have at your disposal, that being Ramu's Lightning Rod. Using this skill, Clive ends up summoning a giant floating ball of lightning that whenever an enemy strikes it, will induce massive stagger damage in a wide area of effect. This move is extremely useful to use whenever you are surrounded by enemies that are constantly attempting to attack you, or whenever you're facing off against a singular enemy that likes to throw out hits that have a long wind-up time, which effectively allows you to get this move out in the interim. In some of the footage you can see here, by using this move effectively, you'll easily be able to take off almost half of an enemy's stagger bar without even having to attack. The true beauty of this move begins to shine, however, when you realize that it doesn't just react to enemies' attacks as well. It'll end up building stagger in a wide area of effect whenever Clive himself begins to attack. And so if you pair up Ramu's Lightning Rod with another skill, such as Garuda's Gouge, which attacks rapidly and repetitively, you'll be able to output an incredible amount of stagger in a very short amount of time, allowing you to swiftly but surely end up staggering whatever enemy lies in your wake. And whilst we're on the topic of Ramu, I should probably mention that his Thunderstorm move, the one where he twirls his staff and throws down a few bolts of lightning, is actually able to juggle enemies with the twirling animation at the very beginning. You just have to get the spacing right and ensure that you're under an enemy that is currently in mid-air. Does it do a lot of damage? Not necessarily. Is it stylish? Almost certainly. Moving on, let's talk about Odin. Odin has one of my favorite skills hands down in Final Fantasy 16 and is one that I think a lot of people who are into combos is particularly going to like. The move that I'm making reference to is called Rift Slip. By enacting a Rift Slip, Clive is quite literally able to cancel out of any single move that he is currently in, allowing you to literally cancel out any active frames or recovery frames for any move that you're currently doing, whether it's jumping, lunging, down thrusting, using any kind of iconic skills, whether you're in a limit break or not. If you end up getting tagged by a stray hit from an enemy and you end up getting sent flying, you're actually able to use Rift Slip to cancel out of that animation as well. The utility for this move is absolutely outstanding. And best of all, whenever you correctly enact a Rift Slip by cancelling out of an animation, time will actually slow down as well, allowing you to get into all kinds of crazy juggles and setups whenever you use Rift Slip. And best of all, the cooldown timer for this skill is actually cut short if you use it in the midst of a combo or whenever you're getting hit to cancel out of those animations. If you are purely interested in the combo potential, then you can use it in training mode where there is no skill cooldown whatsoever, allowing you to combo to your heart's content. And again, whilst we're also on the topic of Odin, let's talk about the Dancing Steel move. This is a move that has an incredibly long startup animation, which leaves you entirely defenseless, but should that first hit connect, you are guaranteed to follow up with the full combo, leaving the enemy completely defenseless, whilst building up a considerable amount of the Zantetsuken meter. One quick tip I can share to getting the Dancing Steel to hit reliably is to pair it up with Shiva's Cold Snap ability. Cold Snap is an ability of Shiva's that acts as a dodge. Not only does it cover more distance than Clive's standard dodge, but if done so with precision timing, you'll end up enacting permafrost, which will freeze all enemies within a part of the battlefield for a considerable amount of time. And so this is the method that I use whenever facing off against tough bosses, particularly in the Final Fantasy hard mode, which will allow me to get a dancing steal off, knowing full well my enemies can't do anything about it. Another quick tip worth mentioning, if you're ever trying to use a skill which requires an enemy to attack you first, whether you're going for a Shiva cold snap, whether you're attempting to parry an enemy, or simply whenever you want to use Odin's flashing steel counter move, you can get an enemy to reliably and consistently attack you on your own time by simply taunting the enemy. Sometimes enemies in this game can be quite passive, leaving you waiting for ages for an attack, 
so you can parry or dodge effectively. And so by using the taunt, you'll be able to speed up that process considerably, keeping the flow of battle up to speed. Speaking of parrying and countering, let's talk about Titan. Specifically one of his moves that I forgot to mention in my previous video. The move in question is called Raging Fists. When using this move, Clive steps forward before throwing out a ballad of blows towards his enemies, doing a fair amount of physical damage as well as stagger damage. What's important to know and important to make use of is that you're actually able to parry enemies' attacks using that initial step forward. By using the move with the proper timing and actually parrying an enemy, not only are you able to cut the skill's cooldown by 50%, but the follow-up series of attacks and punches will actually do an increased amount of damage, incentivizing the player to go for the high-risk, high-reward approach of trying to time the attack. Pressing ahead, I briefly want to revisit Garuda's Deadly Embrace, a topic that I mentioned in a previous video. One thing that I find myself doing quite often that I forgot to mention is using it to dodge enemies' attacks, at least enemies that are too heavy to be pulled towards Clive. Whenever you use Deadly Embrace to attempt to pull an enemy that is too heavy, Clive himself will throw himself up into the air, upon which you can repeat this to gain an incredible amount of height, allowing you to dodge a lot of enemy attacks and also allowing you to come down with an extreme down thrust thanks to the additional height that Deadly Embrace gives you. It's important to mention that after you use Deadly Embrace a few times in mid-air, you'll stop gaining altitude and instead you'll start to fall. And if you mistime things, you could quite literally fall into an enemy's incoming attack, so do be careful. Before we move on, the last iconic skill that I want to talk about is Shiva's Rhyme. Using this ability, Clive is able to throw out a giant ice crystal, which does a considerable amount of damage in an area of effect, provided enemies are close enough. The issue is that enemies seldom stay still in this game, allowing you to throw this ability out and have enemies move away from it merely seconds later. What the game doesn't tell you, however, is that after Rhyme has been cast, you're literally able to reposition it to whatever enemy that you're currently locked onto by simply pressing the ability button again. You're able to reposition it as many times as you want, even while the skill is in cooldown, allowing you to ensure that it does the maximum amount of damage possible at any given moment. Moving away from iconic skills entirely, let's talk about the limit break. I've covered this topic in a previous video, but for those of you that don't know, limit breaks actually increase the potency of Clive's iconic skills by 10%, they lengthen his standard melee combo, and they end up increasing his speed as well as healing him over time. Interestingly enough, however, there is a very specific animation that occurs every time Clive toggles on his limit break. And, funnily enough, this animation is full of invincibility frames, which means that throughout the entirety of this animation's durability, Clive is completely impervious to damage. As you can see in the footage behind me here, you can use this knowledge to your advantage to avoid any incoming attacks from enemies that you'd rather not deal with. Alternatively, you can use the Limit Break animation to cancel out of any of Clive's attack animations, including some of the lengthier ones, and if you've been grabbed by an enemy, more often than not, you can use this animation to break out of these grabs. The last and final tip pertains to icons and their cycling. Some of you out there may find it a little overwhelming to have to deal with three icons all at once, and perhaps you simply just want to get acquainted and warmed up with only cycling between two, or just using the one. You're actually able to disable or remove specific icons in your loadout, allowing you to only use two or to simply use one if you want, by simply going into the menu and trying to equip one icon in two or three slots. And thus we come to the end of this video. If you found this guide helpful or enjoyable, leave a like and subscribe as there's more on the way. If there's anything that you think I've missed, let me know down in the comments below. And with all that said and done, it has been me, Devil Never Cry. I'd like to thank all of you for watching, and as always, I'll see you all next video.